Yeah, let me start off with Hong Kong. In terms of that market, what was the effect that you saw when it comes to the economic slowdown that we know began with the social unrest and the protests and now has deteriorated into the coronavirus effect as well? Uh, well, we've had uh, quite a lot of developments in Hong Kong in 2019. And as far as the electricity sector goes, uh, it had uh, minimal impact on, on our electricity sales. Uh, we do see the longer-term effect of the economy. It, 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 it will grow at a slower pace. Um, on top of that, we've had the recent coronavirus, um, and it's still quite early yet to, to, to really see the economic impact of that. Uh, as far as our business goes, we have to take a long-term view. Uh, we we uh, ride through thick and thin, and uh, we're providing an essential service to the community. Uh, it's important that we get on with the business of decarbonizing our economy and uh, ensuring that we're providing a reliable and uh, uh, economically um, uh, cost-effective and environmentally friendly service. Richard, uh, just to interrupt, we're just getting the latest China numbers when it comes to coronavirus cases and the death toll coming through. China saying that Hubei province has 499 additional coronavirus cases as of February 24th. The death toll now rising to 2,663 with 71 new coronavirus deaths for the country. So that is actually uh, lower than yesterday's where we saw the most number of deaths in about 11 days in China. Uh, total number of cases rising to 77,658 across China uh, and we are seeing that Hubei has 68 new coronavirus deaths as well. Just passing through those numbers, we're also getting that update on the number of patients discharged at 2,589. Richard, I'm curious, if you were to look at uh, the indicators from your business in terms of China power consumption, for example, is there a comparable indicator that you would look at, given the experience with SARS, that would tell you about how economic activity is being impacted in a certain market? Uh, it's... It's very early days yet. We really uh, uh, have only uh, basically January and, and part of February numbers to, to look at. So it's very hard to, to assess any uh, sensible uh, impact on, on the economy at this stage. Uh, as far as electricity consumption goes, we run a diverse portfolio across the whole of China, but we, we have no operations whatsoever in, in Hubei province. And uh, as we've seen from those numbers, very high concentration in Hubei province, but uh, uh, less of an impact across the rest of the, the economy. Uh, for, for our business, it's making sure that uh, we're providing a safe and healthy workplace for our staff. We're keeping the business running as, as reliably as, as possible and, and making sure that our supply chain is uh, is robust and uh, that we have all the supplies that we need. What's your assumption then in terms of when you think uh, industrial activity in China will return to pre-virus levels? Uh, again, that's, that's very hard to predict and will be very patchy. Um, cl clearly where there are still concentrations uh, in, in provinces such as Hubei, things may be much slower to get back to normal, but uh, uh, in uh, in the rest of the economy, it will come at, uh, at, you know, at, at an appropriate and sensible pace. What about uh, cuts to power prices? Because we know that that's in the works to try and assist and alleviate the pressure on the virus-affected regions and businesses. How does that impact your business then? Uh, well, here in Hong Kong, uh, we have offered uh, a package to help uh, our small businesses in particular who've been hard hit by uh, the, the seven months of protests and, and on top of that with coronavirus. Uh, we, we saw uh, late last week the announcement from uh, the central government in, in China to drop uh, electricity prices by 5% and uh, that will be uh, implemented by the, the, the two large grid companies there. Uh, so, understanding where in the economy uh, businesses are hardest hit and uh, work, working in, in ways that we can to help them, uh, obviously, is important as well. Are you considering further investment in nuclear, either in China or in Hong Kong, increasing um, uh, purchases there? Well, we want to decarbonize our business, uh, and in Hong Kong, uh, we have, it's, it's a very small uh, area, so we have limited room for renewable energy. So the, f the, the foundations of our 
low carbon electricity supply will be a mix of natural gas and nuclear power. Uh, we have invested in nuclear power with uh, Dia Bay uh, going back to the 1990s and more recently with Yangjiang uh, nuclear power station. So it, it is part of our portfolio. It, it is a technology that we are comfortable with. Uh, and uh, over time, we would like to explore more opportunities in, in nuclear power. Are you seeing signs of stabilisation in your Australia business? And I'm wondering, is there a bit of a gap in what you're focused on and what the Australian energy policy has been, which is lower prices for consumers, but not necessarily much of a coherent uh, you know, approach towards a more sustainable energy policy? Uh, we would like to see a very consistent and predictable policy in Australia. Uh, there have been flips between uh, a focus more on price uh, and then we see a change in policy which is looking more at uh, the environmental performance of, of, of the industry. Uh, we believe that uh, all economies around the world have to decarbonize. It's just a matter of how quickly you can do that and managing that at a, at a reasonable cost impact. So uh, our policy in Australia, our objective in Australia is, is to continue to decarbonize the business there, um, manage it as best we can. It is a very intense retail competition there uh, and uh, delivering value to our customers, simple and uh, competitive pricing is, is really what we aim to do.